YouTube is awake. That's how we do it. We always have to make sure that YouTube's awake. Come on, YouTube. Wake up. There it is. Yeah, that's coming in nice. That's coming in nice. What's up, everybody? Good to see everyone. Happy Friday. This is the one, the only, new wave Vader for Get Your News On with Ron. The people have spoken, and I won. They said, we want new wave Vader doing the interviews. So here you have new wave Vader doing the interview. You guys know that it's Friday. That means we have a guest. And you guys were like, we want new wave Vader doing the interviews. Why? Ron talks way too much. He just babbles on and on instead of asking a question. And I just want to, I just want to get to know them, man. I just want to know what makes them tick and if they're going to be the true ministers of rock and roll. So my guest today is Rodolfo Berengen, Dr. Rodolfo Berengen. He's a doctor. What is he a doctor of? I have no idea. It might be medicine. It might be love. We're going to find out. But he's running in California's 40th district as a green candidate. Uh, Rodolfo, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, Darth Buttigieg, I presume, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, You know what? I'm a Bernie guy as of recently. I got convinced to go for Bernie because Bernie, I don't know if you know this, but Bernie, he's for single payer health care, which is pretty neat. I think that's the way to go. I mean, look, Rodolfo, when you lose your hand from shredding so hard on guitar, you know the value of, of, of good health care, you know? And, and because it happened to me in the United States, I don't even know how much the final bill was because like my, my management took care of it, you know, but I know it was a lot. And all my buddies over in England were like, bro, if that happened to you over here, it would have been like pretty much nothing. They just would have fixed your hand up and they'd be like, hey, you're good to go. And that'd be it, you know? But in the United States, it's like, whoa, pay out the nose because we have this ridiculous healthcare system. Bernie wants to do something about that. So I'm on board. And also Bernie helped found a punk venue in Burlington, Vermont in the 80s, which I played at a couple times. Um, don't want to revisit those days too much. I really I don't. Do but, but we'll start with the Green Party. So you are a member of the Green Party, which we're, we're going to get into that. Uh, I know a couple things about the Green Party. I know Jello Biafra is involved with the Green Party. So assuming you're friends with him, please tell him he owes me 20 bucks from 79. He'll know what that means. Just next time you see him, be like, hey, Jello, you owe New Way Vader 20 bucks from 79. And he'll probably say something like, oh, Return of the Jedi was a sellout record. Just ignore him and just tell him he owes me 20 bucks. But anyway, so okay. uh, tell us a little bit about you. First of all, what are you a doctor of? So I received my PhD in psychology. Uh, so I'm a psychologist, a research psychologist. I'm, um, you know, I want to make sure that uh, we have science in the Congress because, mm. you know, I know that, as you know, we've been using a lot of our uh, budget, a lot of our resources to build those uh, Death Stars. And, you know, and uh, from one perspective, they're quote, cool, but how about, you know, the health uh, of the people working on the Death Star and of course all the people that the Death Stars are <laughs> killing. Uh, so no, we need uh, complete uh, single payer healthcare uh, in the empire. Uh, you know, the people of the empire deserve uh, some basic respect at the level of healthcare and other things. Um, but ultimately, you know, it's, it's, we're going to have a, a gigantic transformation of this, of this empire. Uh, That's so cool. You're a doctor of psychology. So my son, Luke had this weird moment with his sister. Uh, it was bizarre, man. I don't want to get into it, but like he might have some Freudian stuff going on. So I might want you to talk to him at some point. Uh, but we'll talk about that off mic. So, um, you are for single payer healthcare as well then. Um, so why are you a member of the Green Party? Why did you choose the Green Party as your vehicle to run from off for office? Is it because you're a dead Kennedys fan or is there like another reason? Uh, well, it was very clear to me in 2016. Uh, so in 2016, one of the, I mean, I was a, a super uh, volunteer for Bernie as many others were. And one of the things that I looked into in that uh, in that election was this possibility of vote rigging, and it seemed that you know at first it seemed like a conspiracy theory, um, you know. But myself and a few others were really the first to 
you know, show how uh, the patterns didn't make any sense. Um, and of course, we saw everything that happened in the DNC and with WikiLeaks. And uh, it's very clear to me that the Democratic Party is not what it seems. It's uh, obviously not progressive. But beyond that, it's it's not really a mass party. Like a lot of people think of themselves as Democrats. They're, they're no, they're just tools for the Democrats. Um, so the party is made up of people like Pelosi and Schumer and Buttigieg, and they're going to decide what's going to happen. Of course, we can work and hope and uh, really, you know, labor for Bernie. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a private corporation and they get to do whatever it is that they would are going to be doing and for the nomination. I mean, they defended that in court. They have a right to rig it. So um, I think we need uh, something different. So I chose the Green Party because it's a national uh, party. So, of course, um, you know, there is the possibility of of breaking through. Um, but uh, clearly we need uh, to exit the Democratic Party. So, you know, I hear Ron yell about this stuff all the time. You know, he brings that up, like all the things you just mentioned. So basically, you're saying that the DNC, we cannot reform it. We need a totally different political vehicle. You've chosen the Green Party. Yeah, I mean, we can try to reform it and there's good faith efforts, but there's a couple of things that go usually go wrong. One is that the people that go in and to try to reform it oftentimes uh, get changed themselves. They go uh, towards the center, they make a lot of compromises and they end up being exactly the kind of persons that they were fighting against. That's just what, that's just a description of fact. That's what happens at every level, local level, state level, federal level. Uh, you can even see it with some of the progressives uh, in the Congress now. Uh, they've gone to towards the center. They haven't gone towards the left. They've gone towards the center. Um, so that's that's obviously a problem. So people are changed by the Democratic Party. But overall, the Democratic Party is simply not what people think that it is. Regular people down the street might call themselves Democrats. No, they're simply uh, Demo people that are registered to vote Democrat. They're not parts of the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party is only a few hundred people. The very top um, uh, elected officials in the Congress, uh, plus some of their staff uh, and the consultants, mainly the consultants. So no, I don't think it makes any sense. Um, we can try and we can be loud and we can fight and et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, it's a private corporation uh, where the people have no say. So why would I can't, I'm not gonna be walking into the board of Chevron and demanding that they change how they do uh, you know, everything because that doesn't make any sense. Uh, we need an outside pressure on Chevron to make them change their ways. So let's get into specifically your district, like what you're facing in your district. Tell me a little bit about your uh, opponents and, uh, you know, what you've seen on the ground so far. Have people been supportive uh, to your campaign? Uh, I like a lot of what you have to say. Um, I can't go door to door because dogs go nuts when they see me. It, it's something like, I don't know, a lot of my body's machinery, it's kind of weird. So sometimes I like set off a lot. Sometimes like depending on how the fence is made, I'll stick to it. It's really awkward and uncomfortable. But um, but what have you seen going door to door and meeting the people in your district? Yeah, so, well, first you, you asked about the, the opponents. So yeah, the, I have one of the most um, neglectful opponents uh, in the Congress. She, um, Lucille Robel Allard, she's been there almost 30 years. Uh, she is not a big presence in the community or in the Congress. She is, uh, I would call, I would describe her as a rubber stamper for Nancy Pelosi. So she gets placed on the best committees like the Appropriations Committee, that's the Budget Committee. Um, so everything that, you know, the military and the ICE budget, the DHS, Patriot Act funding, all that goes through her desk. Um, and that's a big part of the reason why I decided to, um, to challenge her because it's a unacceptable <laughs> that she is doing that. Uh, I mean, she is approving the funding for the concentration camps and we are an overwhelmingly uh, Latino district, probably the most, we are the most Latino district in the land uh, and, of, and of course heavily democratic. Um, so it's outrageous that she is uh, has taken that course of action. And thankfully, I have, this is my second time running. So the, the, the first time I got like 25% of the vote as a Green Party candidate. Uh, so hopefully, I mean, this time there are, uh, you know, there's other uh, competitors. So uh, my main task is to make it past the primary. Um, and I think that I actually have um, 
received a lot of very um, positive uh, responses from the community. Um, both because I, I mean, I try to show up as much as I can to events and um, uh, city councils in the area, and I always speak, <laughs> and I always get a big round of applause. And I think that's because I'm speaking the truth. That's not. not do you then tell them like, "Hey, you can <laughs> vote for me, and I can do this more often"? Drop <laughs> the mic. Do you do that? Uh, I should. That's a great line. Um, but. No, people are desperate for change. Um, it's obvious, not just here in the district, but everywhere. And um, so, we, yes, there's a lot of dogs in the, in the district. There's a lot of people that really like dogs, uh, myself included. Um, but I like them. They just yeah. don't like me. I don't know. <laughs> like, maybe they've seen the movies or something, or they've heard the records, and they're more, they like Luke's songwriting better. I don't know what it is. But, um, yeah, I, I just can't. Uh, the black cat that lives here kind of jives with me a little bit, but even she gets weird sometimes. I don't know, dude. But so uh, let me ask you this. So what have you seen on the ground? I, I know we, we talked about this, but so people are receptive to change. They're looking for change. Um, are they open to you? Yes. Um, so I would say that they're, so a congressional district, right, is oftentimes made up of uh, several cities. Uh, so ours is uh, made up of around eight cities. Um, so I've, you know, the part of the area of the district where I live, um, I would say that <laughs> I'm definitely the most popular candidate uh, for this position because uh, every, everyone knows me because I've done so much uh, in regards to our local issues, which, which are actually um, uh, national issues once you really think about it. Uh, and that's how it happens with almost every issue that people have a problem with at the local level. Um, and in other cities, I've been very involved with, um, I've been very involved with two primary movements in our area. One is the, the rent control movement. Um, so I've, uh, and I've been uh, establishing, um, helping to establish others, uh, tenants unions, because you know, that's how tenants are really gonna be winning uh, this fight against unreasonable rent increases to have unions. Uh, so I've been at the forefront of that. I've been endorsed by several local unions um, of tenants. Um, I've also been involved with the environmental justice movement. We actually have a lot of uh, factories, military industrial complex factories in the area. And of course, that doesn't, that's not, that results in a lot of pollution uh, for the local population um, that causes cancer. And so before I came along on the scene, I think people were not quite linking uh the, the the cancer and uh to the pollution to the military so ultimately this is a foreign policy issue why do we have so many uh polluting factories that are killing our community members uh through uh, the toxins that they produce so it's because boeing and lockheed martin uh want profits and, and, and they make they make lightsabers and they make death stars mm -hmm. like yeah. these big energy sucks mm -hmm. yes so no, I think um, uh, people have uh, gotten to know me and have gotten to know uh, the issues that I push for, which are everything that Bernie uh, pushes for and uh, far more. And there's some perhaps, uh, areas of disagreement that I obviously have with Bernie, but um, I'm Bernie and to the left, far to the left. So are, are you, uh, as far as president goes, are you still supporting Bernie? Um, so I have a way of saying it. So if you're, if you're registered Democrat, uh, go vote for Bernie, obviously. Uh, if you're registered Green, well, there's uh, Green Party uh, candidates uh, that people can also vote for in the Green primary. And then uh, there's uh, the Peace and Freedom Party also has uh, its own primary and people can go vote for it. People can go and exercise their, their choices. So, you know, in the primary, it's oftentimes about getting out the issues and getting to be the hopefully the most progressive hopefully we can get the most progressive people um to be represented in the general election uh, and the general election well we'll see uh hopefully bernie makes it to the general election if bernie's uh, in the general would you support him um it really depends on who would be in the other um and the other so the peace and freedom party and the green party are the other two big parties in california for uh, progressives and independents um, so if Bernie were to make it, which I don't think he he would, um, I would encourage people in other states to vote Bernie. I think in California, we have the privilege 
and the right and the duty to push further uh, to the left uh, than Bernie. So that's like, maybe? I support people voting for Bernie in other parts, uh, but I think that the bluest areas need to go uh, green uh, or red socialist, the real red, not the Republican red. So I, I think we need uh, to push a lot. Um, who do you want to see the? Who do you want to see be the Green Party nominee? So um, if you can't answer that, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've I've endorsed Al Hawkins. Uh, I endorsed Hawkins because of his primary uh, domestic agenda, which is extremely progressive, uh, eco-socialist. Um, I am less enthusiastic about a lot of his comments on um, foreign policy. I think that. He goes wrong there. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think that we have other candidates um, in the Green Party at this point that are uh, quite getting there um, on the domestic and the foreign policy front. Um, so I support uh, Bernie, I support Hawkins, I support Gloria La Riva um, in the uh, Peace and Freedom Party as well. Okay, so how would Howie Hawkins be more progressive than Bernie? Well, um, there's uh, examples like um, the full-blown nationalization of the fossil fuels industry, which Bernie has, um, in the past, he was pushing it, uh, but he has not, uh, It's to me, it doesn't seem that uh, he's extremely passionate about that. To me, that's actually a very key thing. I think that we need to uh, make Chevron and uh, ExxonMobil essentially um, departments uh, within the Department of Energy. Uh, I think we need, to, because something like energy production and how energy is uh, manufactured and stored and um, transported across uh, the country, uh, that is a national priority like education. So we have K through 12 education, we should have um, Chevron, ExxonMobil and P uh, PG&E, uh, they should be departments of the government. I don't think that um, Bernie is uh, quite ready to go there. I also think that uh, even though uh, Hawkins unfortunately has allowed himself to be influenced by um, some CNN, uh, CIA propaganda, uh, he is, uh, I think, better than um, Bernie in various other ways. Actually, the, um, the Worldwide Socialist Organization today, I think, or maybe it was yesterday, they published a essay on Bernie and how Bernie um, is, uh, not being, uh, he's open to a uh, preemptive strike on North Korea and Iran. Uh, that's what apparently what he told the New York Times. So to me, that's very worrisome. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure that Holly Hawkins and no other presidential candidate in the Green Party um, would push for uh, such a policy. Hmm. All right, I mean, you know, I'm pretty much a Bernie guy. I know Ron's pretty much a Bernie guy. If Bernie's not the nominee, um, you know, I don't know much about what's going on in the Greens, but I know that Ron is not a Howie Hawkins fan. So uh, if Howie Hawkins is the nominee, I know Ron would be pretty disappointed by that. But uh, I guess we'll see what happens. So people can vote for you in the primary coming up here on Super Tuesday, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. yeah, on March 3rd. Mm -hmm. And then so what happens if you make it after that? Well, um, then, uh, so California has the top two primaries. So I'm voting for the first time since 1976. Yes. I've not voted since 1976, but I re-registered, I'm inspired, I'm on this show, and I hear them babble about rah, single payer, and I'm like, yeah, I'm on board. So explain it to me who is new to voting in California, doesn't really know what a jungle primary means, like, what do I gotta do, Rodolfo? Yeah, so in California, uh, the Democrats wanted to take uh, other parties um, out of the general election, so they uh, established this top two system. Uh, we've had it for like uh, 10 years now, uh, where Republicans and Democrats and Greens and uh, Libertarians and Peace and Freedom and Independents are all tossed into a general jungle primary um, so that happens with the presidential primary. And so anyone of any party can vote uh, for a, nom a potential nominee of another of 
of whatever party. So it's not the party nominating anyone, it's rather the voters are uh, deciding. And so the top two vote getters uh, then go off to an election in November. Um, and so it's just one or the other. So that could be, be two Democrats, which would be really bad. Uh, that could be a Republican and a Democrat. Well, we know how that usually turns out. And um, it, would, it would be great for it to uh, maybe go to uh, uh, a Republican and a Green, uh, like myself. Um, what are the chances of that happening? So like, have, who's all in your race? So I actually think that it could be a high probability because uh, we have an unpopular opponent. So that's uh, the one that- uh, the, the, the Democrat opponent is unpopular. The Democrat opponent. Been there for 30 years, just kind of been an establishment. Okay, yeah. okay, and all right, then, I'm jiving, I'm jiving. And then there's two other Democrats that decided to uh, put their name in the hat. And one of them um, actually uh, ran before I ever ran. Um, and he's uh, known as, I think, especially among the senior community. Uh, so he um, he might really take a lot of votes. Uh, and then there's another Democrat. So Democrats have three choices. And one is the incumbent who is not popular. Uh, and then you have the Republican. Republican voters are not uh, very prevalent in the district, but you know, of course they are uh, around, so they could rally for uh, the Republican. And then we actually have an American independent. Uh, so the American independent party is a California based party. Um, and they are not independent in the formal sense of independence. They are, uh, they have been described uh, as a far right party. Um, there's been, there's always, every four years there's articles about them because a lot of people think that that means the registering uh, American independent means that they will be independent, but no, actually that's no party preference in California MPP. And uh, so the, uh, the American independent party is a far right party. Um, so, so people, thankfully not that many people registered American independent uh, in our area. And thankfully we have been able to blast out our messages. So um to the district you know i have a i, I feel like I, I i probably have the most sophisticated software um election operation of, of, of the race so we'll see we'll see what happens but i do think that it might be possible that no democrat makes it because there's three of them and um one of them is the incumbent who's not popular they could split their vote and hopefully the young people know to vote true progressive that doesn't mean automatic democrat uh in this race it means uh the green candidate so top three issues, the holy trinity of issues, go. So um, life is a very important thing. So we should preserve it. Uh, that of course means Medicare for all, but we shouldn't just have a, a healthy life. We also need to be educated and we need to have opportunities. So we need free, uh, tuition-free public college for all everyone who wants to go to college or a vocational trade school, even all the way up to graduate school, because that feeds into a positive uh, society. Uh, and Dude, that Rodolfo, look, man, I wanted to be a doctor. That's what I really wanted. Palpatine got me in the band early, and I was just, I was hooked, man. So I, I'm with you, totally. Free college. People need those opportunities. All right, sorry, continue. <laughs> Yeah. And then after uh, people graduate, uh, they need opportunities like a job. So we need uh, every person who would like a job, they should have a job. So this is the federal jobs guarantee idea. And if people, uh, that could be any kind of job. You should be paid for the artistic work that you do. Uh, that that could be and should be a job. Uh, I'm going to let Ron know. Mother. I'm totally going to let Ron know. I don't think he pays any of the contributors. He right. says he does, but like all he really, like occasionally he's like, hey guys, here's some orange slices and there's donuts in the break room. And it's right. like, really, dude, really? Right. You're supposed to be some big lefty, but your contributors, you're, we're not getting paid. He's like, no, New Wave Vader, totally. I'll hook it up, man. I can get you some studio time for free. And I'm like, dude, I am in a power duo with Iggy freaking pop. 
Galaxy Glamour Adolfo. Look out for our record. It's coming out soon. But anyway, like I don't need uh, – don't get me started. The guy – he's he's a good dude. But, yeah, whatever. I'm with you. So could a federal jobs guarantee – I mean, obviously the word federal is in there, right? But, mm -hmm. like, could something like that also be done on a city level in conjunction? Is that a possibility? Absolutely. So the best plan is uh, for the Congress to print the money into existence, to order its printing, send that to local communities, and in local communities, they know what they need. Uh, so in our community, we have a lot of, for example, industrial pollution. We need to. So you're saying up. so that the printing the money thing that kind of uh, that gets into DMT, right? <laughs> or no, 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 wait, wait, <laughs> hang on. Yeah, you're right. All right. Yeah, that's the thing I was into in the 80s. MMT. Right. Okay. All right. Sorry. Continue, please. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So in the same way that we print out money for the Death Stars, uh, for Raytheon, uh, we need to print money for um, good jobs, good education, health care. That's really all there is to it. Congress orders through a bill the print, the appropriation of the money. That means the printing of the money. So, uh, so it's not about Congress directing the jobs or the healthcare or the free college. It's about Congress uh, putting the bill, which of course Congress can do. They simply order it into existence. So someone sits um, at the Treasury, at the Federal Reserve, and they click. Okay, uh, you know, someone gets a million dollars for a contract. So in the same way, people should get a teacher should get. What Bernie's calling for is sixty thousand um, dollars a year. So they should just get it from where from where from the typing machine at the government. That that's it. There's 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 no more discussion than that. That's how it's going to be paid for. You type it into existence and you make life better uh, throughout the country. Uh, so yes, it needs to be like a system. Uh, so healthcare, education, good jobs. There's a lot of jobs and even you know. Moms should be compensated for all the work that they do to raise a child. And of course, some dads and uh, child rearing is uh, a job. Is, uh, you know, so everyone sh deserves compensation for the positive uh, things that they contribute to the community. And they can come up with their own jobs. You know, like, again, we should be paying artists. Artists should, there should, the phrase struggling artists should no longer exist. Uh, art is something that is very important for society. Yeah, the only struggle is being able to handle the rock and roll. The struggle's on you. That's what I'm saying. Hell yeah. Exactly. So yeah, in a way, it's like the gang's, uh, you know, uh, universal uh, income in a way. But um, so yeah, those are top three domestic priorities. And of course, beyond that, we just got to stop the wars. Stop all the wars, bring the troops home, um, and close the bases. That's that's gonna get us where we need to be. And hopefully Bernie can uh, become the nominee and achieve that. And if he doesn't become the nominee, well, we need to be ready outside of that Democratic Party for for more, something else. It can't... Well, something Ron always says, and like, I guess it's true. Again, I'm, I'm just waking up now, man. It's been since 76, but like, Ron says that, like, even if Bernie wins, which he's hoping Bernie wins, but even if Bernie wins, he'll only be as effective as the movement behind him because he's going to be fighting the Congress at every level, which is which is a testament to the structure of our system, which is why it is good for people to take outside approaches like you're taking. Um, so, yeah, like the movement has to be big behind him. Otherwise, it'll be an ineffective presidency. Do you agree with that? Yeah, so a lot of people, you know, like are trying to think of um, Bernie as the next FDR, but FDR didn't get and to establish all those programs that are now widely popular and were widely popular out of nowhere. He had people in the streets, in the congressional offices. Dude, it was kind of punk rock what happened. Like basically <laughs> FDR, like he was a little more moderate than a lot of people realize, first of yeah. all, as an individual, but he went up to all of his like rich butthole friends and were like, hey, buttholes, let's take a second and stop smelling our own farts and look at all those angry people out there. You're either going to give up a little bit of your money or you're going to give up freaking all of it. You choose because they're out there and they ain't going away. Right? Exactly. Uh, I mean, Bernie's not as clearly as rich as uh, 
as uh, FDR was. Um, and I don't think Bernie is coming from a position of, uh, a lot of, some people think that he's a quote, tool of, of the Democrats. I don't quite buy that. I think that he is a legitimate fighter, has been for a long time. Um, but I, I do think that he would actually be more successful and he would already be in the White House if he had left the Democratic Party. He should have left when um, at the Wells Fargo Center in 2016, uh, they denied it to him and it was painful for all of us. And he should have just marched out with his delegates and formed his own party, which is what many uh, leaders throughout the world have done. Just in Mexico, they, you know, uh, President AMLO only won when he decided that he had had enough with the establishment party. So he formed his own party and people loved it. So it's very sad that Bernie didn't take that route. And if he doesn't take it this time, if they rig it again, which I think, I mean, the rigging is already in motion. It's already happening. Uh, I mean, yeah. it's because like, I totally agree with you. I mean, I know that Ron was at the Convergence Conference trying to urge Bernie to start a new party. He was there in Washington, D.C. They were urging Bernie to start a new party. Jill Stein was there as well. A lot of people were there. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a bummer because you need a big leader to start a new party and all the people with the political acumen to do it they have all thus far said no, which is a uh, totes bummer, dude, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, you. I do think you, you do need a pretty popular person to do that. Um, and it's very unfortunate and worrisome that Bernie uh, has not taken that opportunity. I mean, he's well-versed, I think, in history, and he understands what's been going on and seeing what's going on. Uh, uh, yeah, just again, to use the example of in, in Mexico of AMLO, he ran several times for president, and they always, in the establishment parties, they rigged it against him. And well, you know what it is, Rodolfo? We've just had a two-party thing for like a long time in the United States. And what people forget is that the Republicans became the Republicans in a six-year period. It does happen where like a new party forms. Maybe history takes a long time to repeat itself, but it eventually does repeat itself. And the fact that it's been so freaking long is just a testament to the fact that we're freaking due. We're freaking due for a new soundtrack, just like every revolution has. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I do know exactly what you mean. A revolution uh, needs a little more enthusiasm, bro. All right. Like you have to be like, yeah, it's time, bro. I'm with you. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a challenge, you know, uh, it's a challenge. It can be done. It needs to be orchestrated though. You no, know, in times past, let's think, think about the French revolution, right? So what happened there it was pretty amazing. You know, these, uh, women moms marched to Versailles and took the king back to, Paris, could we march to the White House and uh, you know remove Trump? I suppose we could if we had a, a lot of people because they have a lot of very, very uh, deadly uh, weaponry um, and they have control over the, the communications. They know everything about everyone um, and they, they have too much power. It's so gnarly, man. I mean, not even Palpatine established mass surveillance, dude. Like, it's crazy. All right, Rodolfo, but you're fighting the good fight. You're doing the good work. You've been running a good campaign. Where can people go to learn more about you and get involved? Yeah, so people can go to um, Barragan, B-A-R-R-A-G-A-N, for number four, congress.com. And um, yeah, you'll see a lot of my uh, policy priorities there. You'll also see more about me and uh, if you if you have some uh spare uh cash feel free to donate at the link at the top and um, you can also email me at rodolfo that's my name r-o-d-o-l-f-o at um uh, the website address dot uh, dot com so uh, barrigan for congress dot com awesome so barrigan for congress dot com that's the number four rodolfo barrigan running in california's 40th district Best of luck to you, Adolfo. Please let us know if there's anything we can do to help. Uh, I know Ron wants to help you out whenever he can. And uh, in the meantime, happy Valentine's Day, dude.
Hope you're doing something killer. Yes, got my red on. Yes, okay. Awesome, yeah. Well, thank you so much uh, for having me. Uh, and you wave Vader. I love it. Peace. See, see ya.